I've been talking a lot about this declarative style of Angular code using RxJS and signals. A lot of the time the examples just deal with state locally since that's essentially where most of the problem space is. But I've had quite a few comments from people who are unsure how you would integrate this style of code with a basic CRUD backend. I've already covered examples using third-party APIs or Firebase as a backend. You'll find links in the description to those if you're interested. But I can see how a CRUD backend with a simple REST API could feel like a bit of a missing piece here. So that's what we are going to address in this video. We're going to look at how to take this QuickList application from my Angular course and hook it up to a backend instead of just storing data locally. QuickList is basically just a more complex version of a typical CRUD to do app and uses the reactive and declarative style I'm always going on about. As the backend, I'll be using this simple REST API that I built using Go. It doesn't really matter that it's written with Go. I just did that because I'm learning Go and I thought it would be fun. The backend could be any kind of REST API. It doesn't even necessarily need to be a REST API. The important part for this video is the concepts we'll be using on the front end to integrate with the API. So I'm going to assume you already have some context about the approach I'm using here, but if you're not, or you're thinking, hey, what's the deal with these manual subscribes? That's not reactive. I'll have some links to other videos in the description that explain that. But the super quick recap version is this. We have these sources that are going to be triggered when we are reading data into the application or when some user action occurs like adding new data, editing data or deleting it. Then we have this reducer step which decides how to handle those create, read, update and delete actions. It is this step that takes the data out of this event-based RxJS part of the application and into the signals part of the application where our state is maintained and consumed. With the current version of the application, the data is just held in memory locally. You can see the way we are handling all of these events or actions is by updating the state signal by adding, editing, or removing the necessary data in the signal. Then whenever our state signal changes, this effect handles saving the data to local storage. And that's our entire state management and data persistence approach. So the question is, how do we hook this up to some REST API backend instead of using local storage? Let's start with a more basic and I guess obvious approach. This is a viable approach, but the one we will use in the end is a bit better. We have this checklist loaded source, which pulls in our data from local storage. Let's just replace that with a get request to our API. And that's pretty much done now. Now our data will load in from the API instead of local storage. Now let's deal with this add source. This emits whenever the user is trying to add a new checklist and it will emit with the data necessary to create that checklist. Instead of updating our local state signal in response, we will just switch to a request that posts that data to the appropriate API endpoint. I'm specifically using a concat map here instead of a switch map, since technically it is possible for multiple ads to be triggered before the previous ad request has completed. Now there is no need to handle updating the state signal inside of our subscribe here, but we do still need to create a subscription for this stream so it executes the request. We are going to make this nicer later, but these sorts of subscribes are actually fine in a reactive and declarative context. In this case, the data is leaving the application and it is fine to pull that data out of the reactive context and send it off to a server somewhere. We don't care about it anymore. It would be a problem if we cared about the response from the server and wanted to update our local state as a result. Updating state as the result of a subscribe is what is typically a problem in a reactive and declarative context. That is also specifically what we are doing with the existing approach, but this was a very intentional breaking of the rules for reasons that I outlined in one of those videos I mentioned earlier. So now we can continue in this fashion for the rest of our actions. We basically just take that action and switch to the appropriate request to the endpoint and we are done. Well, sort of. This still leaves us with a problem. How do we handle propagating the state back into the application after we send our HTTP request to various endpoints? Technically, we could have just left our signal updates in the subscribe to replicate the changes locally, as well as sending the data off to be stored in the backend. This is actually a fast and performant way to handle the situation. But things can get a bit iffy as the local and server state could be out of sync and handling failed requests adds some extra complexity to this situation. Where possible, I like to treat the original source of data as the source of truth. I just want a stream of data that I can rely on as a true representation of what the data should be. 
So ideally, I want a stream of data from the backend that updates whenever any request to update the data completes. WebSockets sound ideal for this, and they might be necessary in some circumstances, but we can actually keep things simpler for this particular case. This is the cool part. Let's take all of these action reducers we have, and instead of subscribing to them in the constructor, we are just going to declare those streams as sources of data. They are just streams that extend our initial action streams in some way. Keep in mind these streams now no longer work because nothing is subscribing to them. But now what we can do is rather than having this checklist loaded source to just load our data once, we are going to create a stream that will make a get request to our backend whenever any of the streams we just created emit. So in our constructor, we can merge all of those streams into one and switch to our HTTP request to load the data whenever any of those streams emit. We then update our state signal with that data in the subscribe, and this also handles subscribing to all of those streams with just the one single subscribe. We do still need one more addition here. We also need the load to be triggered once when the application first loads, so we add a start with, which will handle that. Now this stream will fetch the data once initially, and again whenever any of our requests complete. So if I make any change in the application, I can see that reflected because the data is being refetched every time I make a change. This works quite well in this particular case, but of course there are always considerations. We are loading the entire set of data from the server after every change, which might not work well for large amounts of data. If the response from the server after adding some data is slow, we might need to make UX improvements to the app. And there's a whole host of other things we might take into consideration and adjust the approach. But this is the basic idea of how you can hook up this style of code to a basic CRUD backend. And let me know if you'd like to see me extend this series even more. We could look into using a proper database instead of just storing the data in memory. We could look into things like authentication and maybe some other stuff too. If you like this video, consider dropping a like or subscribe before you go, and I hope to see you back here again.